Welcome back to a mental health break with Vincent A. Lancey. I'm excited to launch another episode for you all. I'm Vincent Lancey, speaker and author of the book, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption. When I was 21 years old, I was the victim of a hit and run accident while walking home from a friend's birthday. After coming out of a coma and suffering from a traumatic brain injury, or you may know of as a TBI, I soon realized that it was time to put my mental health on a very, very high pedestal. This podcast is going to be all things mental health. Would it benefit you to hear from mental health professionals and influencers? Would it also add value to your life to hear real life, authentic stories from people talking about their mental health, the issues they face, and how they actively combat them? If so, you came to the right place. I wanna start by congratulating you for making your mental health a priority. If you missed the last episode, be sure to download it after you tune in today. Remember, my goal is to bring you value-filled episodes each episode with a variety of doctors, influencers, and individuals who are open to discussing their mental health difficulties. On this episode, I'm happy to introduce someone who has been speaking about his experiences associated with mental health for years. My amazing guest today is Chris Williams. We actually met because of two situations that took us both off our feet, but we are still here. Chris Williams is a TBI brother of mine. He has survived, he has persevered, and he has made it clear that he will not give up, and I am proud of him each day and every day. He has positively affected hundreds of lives, and now we both speak at TGH to help others through our stories. He has a whole lot of value to offer through his experiences, both medically and professionally. He is so much more than a fellow author of the valuable book, Order of the Rod. I'm looking forward for you all to take a walk in his shoes. I'd like to now officially introduce my man, Chris Williams. Chris, welcome to the show, and thanks for being my guest. Hey, what's up, man? Great to be here. Absolutely. Chris, go ahead and preview your story a little bit before we hop into the questions so our listeners can get to know you a little better. Uh, so, so my story happened in 2011, um, July. I call it my rebirth day. So July 10th is my rebirth day. Got two of those things now. Um, so I had my accident. Um, the people that I was with, um, they, they knew it was bad. So I was fortunate enough to get one of them to uh, sign for me at the hospital so I could have my um, surgery. It was, uh, my life was dependent on that surgery um, that I was able to have immediately. Um, and my recovery was, it was probably, I still go through stuff, but it was probably about four to five years long to really get back to the person I am today. Um, I faced a lot of battles, a lot of struggles, and I found that the more I was able to share my story and come in contact with people, the better I got. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Talking is such a key, key part to recovery. But Chris, something I do on each episode is I share a mental health story of someone who is famous because I want to let you, the listeners, know that you are not alone. I want you all to understand that even though someone looks healthy from the outside, they may not be on the inside too. I found a great, great article on a celebrity that I personally did not know was facing many health issues. This feature was on Brad Pitt and it discusses an in-depth interview. Here are some notes I jotted down. Over time, Brad Pitt has had some mental health issues, including suffering from being very, very vulnerable emotionally and also extremely lonely. He talks about how his life got to the point where he didn't even remember a day since college where it wasn't, quote, boozing or had a spliff or something. Now, he replaced his alcohol with a healthy alternative. He now chooses fizzy water with cranberry juice. He said in the interview, and this is a quote, I've got the cleanest urinary tract in all of LA, I guarantee you. <laughs> but the terrible thing is I tend to run things into the ground. I've got to run it into a cliff. I'll, I do it with everything. Yeah, I exhaust it and then I walk away. I've always looked at things in seasons, compartmentalize them, I guess seasons or semesters or tenures. I think this is a perfect example for my younger listeners that are coping with vices like alcohol who don't understand that this can actually turn into a lifelong addiction. He also gets personal in the interview where Pitt shares that he came from a place where the situation arises and he didn't talk about it much, just dealt with it. He talks about how he had a father knows best or war mentality type father. So he had a very difficult time expressing his emotions and struggles. He also had a very public divorce with actress you may all have heard of, Angelina Jolie, and is now in a very healthy place mentally. And it's great to hear if I've been a fan of his for years. What'd you think of his story, Chris? Man, I didn't know that at all. It was uh, pretty mind-blowing. Um, I guess everybody um, is facing stuff, and it, and it goes to show that no matter if you look 
healthy on the outside, which I've been judged about a lot. Um, I wasn't, and everybody just assumed I was. Absolutely. You guys don't know Chris yet, but after you hear the episode, I'm sure you'll be looking into him. He's a guy that takes care of his health. Great big guy, but he's got even a bigger heart, and that's why I'm very fortunate enough to have him on the show. So, Chris, something I do on each episode is I do something called the main event. Each episode, my guest and I go over a series of six questions. Again, my goal is to feature many valuable guests, including mental health doctors, influencers, and patients. I ask the doctors who join the show a slightly different series of questions than my patients and non-licensed influencers. By doing this, I get to deliver as much value to you all as possible. You ready to rock and roll, Chris? Ready to rock. Many would agree that the more common or talked about types of mental illnesses are mood disorders, anxiety disorders, or schizophrenia disorders. What areas did you or do you personally experience the most? Oh, man. I would say um, I did, my memory got really good. So I, I didn't come across um, some things that were, that were where I was – I kept falling back into the same pattern. Um, I'd say the only pattern that I kept falling back into was I didn't understand personality disorder. So I was, I was often faced with um, falling into relationships with people who had personality disorder. So that kind of helped me understand um, through experience what was going on, what I needed to focus on, and things that I were doing with myself that I didn't even realize I was doing. Um, I, I think I was a little, I was a little wild. After my um, my surgery, after I came out, I was trying to be normal, and I didn't realize um, how affected I was. So I faced a lot of uh, depression um, in the beginning, and I, I coped with depression by using alcohol again after I just had had my accident. Yeah, if you don't mind, can we dig a little bit into the type of surgery, what went on there, to give our listeners a little more in-depth understanding of what we're talking about? All right, so I had a craniotomy, an epidural hematoma. Um, I had, so I had two blood clots. Um, I had some injury to my elbow. Um, I tore all the facial muscles in my jaw. So my jaw was uh, all the way to the side. I couldn't chew and really talk normal. Um, since then, I've lost my sense of smell. I'm pretty much deaf in my left ear, and um, it's kind of uh, fading in my right ear. Um, along the way, I picked up some sign language with a relationship that I was in. Um, the girl had a master's in uh, sign language, and uh, something I picked up really easily. So ASL, American Sign Language. Wow, that's a great skill to have either way, to be able to communicate with more people and share your story and impact others' lives. So, Chris, at what point did you realize that a career relating to mental health was the right for you? We can go ahead and talk about your professional career as well as giving back through your story? Uh, you know what? I would say within the, ooh, the, second, the second year when I really came out of uh, – I started getting back, we'll say, more to me. Um, a relationship that I was in, she was a charge nurse at TGH and one of our, one of our places to speak at. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was called upon to, to, give, to give hope to this family that their, their son had had a brain injury and his skull was remo removed and placed in his abdomen. He was still in a coma. Um, but that was, that was when I knew that I, how, how good I was able to impact their family and what I knew intuitionally in my gut when I spoke to him while he was in a coma and he heard every word that I was saying, we can touch on that uh, later. I don't go too much into it, but um, that was when I knew that, this is what I want to do. I wanted to share my story and give hope. Isn't it, you know, so amazing where how talking about it not only helps us so much, but the people you're giving the time to, how appreciative they are. I know one thing, at least for me, when I was in the hospital, things like that, you have a ton of doctors telling you this may happen, this, 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 but I didn't have that many TBI people come into my room and say, hey man, I've been through it. You'll be all right. This is what will happen. That's why yeah. I love doing what I do, and I commend you for also the same. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was great. I'll tell you what, um, to, a, it, you know, to have had somebody to come talk to me um, would have been amazing. Mm -hmm. But stepping back, it was something I just knew that I was okay. Um, I was already taking initiative at that point to get myself out of that bed as fast as I could. Absolutely. You're one of the most motivated people I know, and that will continue to – 
show as we go through this show. I'm sure my man. Thank you. Thank you. What advice can you give to your listeners as what may be considered some potential early signs that they may be starting to develop a mental illness? I would say uh, not coping. Love bad it. coping skills. Um, so bad coping skills, codependency. Um, and then now this codependency can come on people, it can come on shopping, it can come on uh, overtraining, working out, getting having uh, obsessive uh, disorders that you don't even realize that you might think are healthy. So you have to be careful with those healthy skills that you think you're developing because sometimes you're just coping in a way that you're not facing yourself and dealing with what you need to. Absolutely. And I hated the feeling of being so dependent on everybody, everything. I couldn't pee on my own. I couldn't walk on my own, talk on my own. And I think that's kind of maybe why, or an influencer, why we both do our own thing. We like yeah. to be independent and pay it forward at, as we can. Absolutely. Totally. Absolutely. Totally. This is an interesting one. And I'm happy to talk to you about this one because I know you're going to add the value. If you could pick three and only just three, what would the three most important things you can give our listeners to do on a daily basis or short-term solutions to start improving their mental health? Um, writing down your goals before you go to bed. Love it. Create, create a... Um, Create a routine that's going to, for your next day, that's going to help you take over the world. Um, you know, you're, when I say take over the world, not the physical world, mm -hmm. but your world inside, um, that would be a great start. Um, that's a great first one. Keep them coming, man. Yep. Yeah, so, so then another one would be blood work. Get your blood work checked, if, especially if you have a head injury, because you can't take a knock to the head like you did um, and think that something's not going to be rewired different. Get some blood work, talk to a hormone specialist, a neurologist, somebody who specializes, specializes in this, so that way you can find the best recovery. Um, third would be find a TBI patient that's in full recovery because they're going to be able to give you an array of skill set that is going to carry you through your new life. Absolutely. And just the stages of my recovery. I know I can't speak for you, but every month that would go by, I started to realize I wasn't as sharp as I was last month. I kept thinking I was healed. I kept thinking I was cured, but I didn't know any different. I didn't know the old Vincent in that way. I went right away back to school, started studying for a GMAT and I'm failing these tests bad, these practice exams. And I'm studying 15 hours, 10 hours a day. And I couldn't put two and two together. Why? But if I had somebody to talk with about my mental health, I mean, the dividends that would have been, they would have been priceless. Yeah. I, I, I remember that. I, I went into, um, <laughs> I was trying to do a real estate school. Now I, I passed real estate school, but tell you what, I had to relearn how to learn. Yeah, my yeah. learning, my learning skill set was not the same. So everything I did in high school and college, it was totally different. Oh, I had to reform my it study work, habits yep. as well. I mean, I used to be a guy who used to look over something two or three times before a test, get an 80, feel okay. Yeah. And then yeah. it became read, write, type, read, write, type, read, write, type 40, 50 times just to get a tenth of that information. Yeah. Frustrating, yeah. But you either sit and soak or we make a bad day into a good day like us. And it ain't a limitation. We just work right. with our brain injury right. and we move forward. Those are great. Some short-term initiatives, man. Let's look a little longer. Let's what are two long-term commitments that our listeners can create a healthier mindset with a little something that takes a little more time. Something's going to take a little bit more time. All right. So one thing that I did um, to take a little bit more time to, to get to where I'm at today is I thought about my skill set that I wanted. I thought about what encompasses around my skill set. So there's usually about five things in one. So if you pick one thing, so say I picked coaching. Well, in that coaching, I picked about five things that circled around it to embody and encompass this one sphere of connection, um, of making me a one-stop shop so I can cover everything. Now, it's going to take close to eight to ten years to develop the skill set with five things that you can master but when you master the skill set, um, you're going to be an unavoidable obstacle that somebody has to deal with you to get everything they want. They don't have to go anywhere else. They know that it's you. 
if you can develop that skill set and don't listen to everybody that who gives up on you when they say, oh, uh, they're sending you job applications to get another job because I've had that done. But they didn't realize and they weren't listening to me when I told them that, that my dream is this, health saved my life and I'm going to give back. Now, how can I give back? I had to create all these avenues around it that led to me. Now, when I created all those avenues and I paved all the roads and I built those buildings around it, now everybody leads to my street and I'm on Main Street. I love that. I love that. I mean, your work ethic speaks for yourself and how you're willing to accomplish these goals. People want the best for us, for sure, but they, it's tough to understand what we really, really want. You know, it's, uh, yep. give me yeah, one more, Chris. You got to give me one more too. Your valuable insight's so good. I need to hear one more. <laughs> one more. All right. So, um, I would say one of, one of the, one of the best things you can do after TBI is you're, you're facing your own mental health stuff. All right. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to become a personality mind detective. You need to learn about all these personality types in the world. Now, all these personality types in the world, you're going to face. You're going to, you probably already faced them and didn't realize it. Once you understand these mind personality types, then you're going to be able to better yourself and realize that you were stuck in a pattern. You were stuck doing things that were causing your downfall. You were self-sabotaging. Yeah. This will prevent you from self-sabotaging. This will prevent you from getting into relationships um, that are going to be toxic and that are going to pull down your goals, that are going to drain the life out of you. Um, so I would say take some extra classes. Learn about mental health. Learn about how it affects the world today. Um, and I want to just go on a limb and say that yeah, go ahead. More, more women – are given the benefit of the doubt for mental health than men. And um, I want to take a stand for all the men out there that, that are wearing it on their shoulder, that are taking it in the chest and um, that aren't given the, the correct help that they need because they look good on the outside and they look like a big, strong guy. The guys, we got it just as bad as the women. And uh, when we start realizing that, then everybody's going to get the correct equal opportunity for mental health. You know, that's one of my goals of this show. There's uh, in an earlier episode, I discussed one of the, uh, the celebrity stories where the masculinity involved with people thinking if they talk about their mental health, they're more feminine, that they're less of a man when that's not the case. In a world where mental health is finally getting the attention it deserves, you know, I needed to create a platform like this, bring people like you on the show because of how many lives we can hopefully help. That's great stuff, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. What would you say are some ways that you're planning on raising awareness for the importance of mental health in the near future? What's on your agenda coming up? I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, what's on my agenda, man, is um, I've, been, I've been ready to link up with you again and go start speaking at these places like we used to. That We're was, uh, that We're was gonna get that my, going. That was my favorite stuff. Um, I've, I'm with one of the new added skill sets. Um, I run a neural, uh, it's called a new fit machine and it has to do with um, neuron, signals in your brain and everything this is what um, we spoke about at, at lunch this is what we this is what we spoke about at lunch and um this uh this machine has given me a platform to get to people and help people that um that i've been wanting to so i'm i'm, I'm thinking that this machine is also going to be the next step for the platform climbing 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 those rungs of stairs <laughs> Absolutely. We're definitely going to organize some sort of event to speak together at me and Chris spoke over at the Amway Center in Orlando. And it was an ex incredible experience. Yeah. But Chris, thanks so much for joining me today. I know our listeners will see all the value in the episode today. I loved how you personalized everything. You took it from the heart. And I know everybody listening in is going to understand that. Something I do on the end of the show, Chris, called The Last Word. I do this on my other podcast, what it's really like to be an entrepreneur, who I think you might be a good fit for that one as well. But I want our listeners to really get to know my guests. That's why I do it. Is there something you want to share with everybody listening on that we didn't get to touch on today? Um, you know what? I'm gonna, the last word, I'll keep it short. And this is something that I, I put at the heading of my book. And it's out of Psalms. And it was, um, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. 
oftentimes we forget that. I think we need to uh, remember it. If you need to write that down, you can write down just the, the first little letter, make it a little some abbreviation for you. But um, I think as long as we remember that, we can keep the love inside. I love it. You mind sharing your social media, your website, name of your book again, any ways for our listeners to follow your endeavors, request your services, all that good stuff. All right. So it's uh, on Instagram. It's chris.streamline. Um, my email is streamlineathleticsfl at gmail.com. I coach at MI40 Gym, doing transformation coaching, um, new fit technician for hypertrophy. Um, my Facebook is Christopher Williams. Um, so if y'all want to find me on there and get in touch with me, I'd love to talk to all of you. Yeah, Chris is a great resource, and he's a great guy who would definitely be open to answering any questions you got, linking up. Definitely can train you and turn you into something special. Remember, you all can follow the show on Instagram and Facebook at A Mental Health Break, and we're on Twitter at Podcasts by Lancey. My handles are at Vincent A. Lancey on all social media and YouTube, and my website is VincentALancey.com. If you liked today's episode, please continue listening and rate A Mental Health Break with Vincent A. Lancey five stars. I work very hard to find value delivering stories for you on each episode. Thanks for listening in, and I'll see you all in the next episode of A Mental Health Break with Vincent A. Lance.